the state of f food per se, or you know, food and fibre, if you like, is that it's really the engine, it's the economic engine of the country. So, you know, we're, we're very, very good at being active in the primary industry. We know how to produce and we know how to produce world class food and beverages. A lot of people from the outside look at New Zealand and the marketing campaign of 100% pure and they, they're like, oh, organic foods, etc. But actually, we know in New Zealand that there's a lot of work that we need to do. We're part of an industry that um, does use chemicals, it does use pesticides, does use herbicides, things that are damaging to the soil. There's no very, very quick solution to that because you're also bound by other motivations in generating and creating wealth. So how do you balance um, conservation with commerce? It's a fine line, but it's an incredibly important one, I think, to think about deeply. Food, overall, generates 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. Cows generates 15% of greenhouse gas emissions. It's not just a question of trying to um, improve the way we farm now to be able to produce more food. We've actually got to completely reinvent um, our food systems. My real passion is around helping people with irritable bowel syndrome regain their love of food and also help control their symptoms through their diet. IBS is actually the second most common cause of missed work after the common cold. So it has a massive run-on effect. It's not only affecting our physical selves, it also affects our, our um, emotional state and it also has run-on effects to our relationships with our work, with our friends and with our partners and families. In 2013 we started this process of looking for all the top nutritionists, doctors, chefs, sustainability experts, farmers all around the world to say what is a low-impact diet? Not just good for you, but good for the planet. I had the privilege of growing up in a restaurant setting. We had a restaurant settled in the middle of our garden. My mum's philosophy was that good food was fresh food and it was simple food. The reason why food education is so important, not just in New Zealand, not just in China, but for everywhere in the world, is because if you think about all the 17 sustainable development goals, think about them. Every single one of them can be achieved simply by choosing a different diet. When we start to think about food, it's best to start with the nine planetary boundaries identified by the Stockholm Resilience Centre. They are measuring um, biochemical flows um, in the planetary system. The biggest overshoot is on nitrogen and phosphorus. That's a result of our farming systems. Kids are the answer to changing the way we eat. Kids are the answer because they haven't formed their dietary habits yet. Give them exposure to way, the way that things should be, that all foods should be like a rainbow, that it should come from local areas, that they should know how to grow it with their own hands. For us, the big challenge in New Zealand is to get people's um, head around those issues and to um, make it very clear to people that very challenging new technologies are coming. So in particular, um, cellular agriculture, where we grow meat or, or produce a reasonable facsimile of milk. I want people to have more access to dietitians so they can get the personalised advice they need to tailor the diet to their specific needs. So the very biggest challenge is to get people um, excited about um, the fundamental rethink of food. And I still, th I think we can play a really important role in that in New Zealand.